one of the most misunderstood things in modern audio is this shiny high res audio logo you see it on headphones on streaming services and on digital albums you download online the industry presents it as a promise a guarantee that you're getting studio quality sound the absolute best version of your music but here's the thing what if you're paying a premium for something that most people can't even tell apart from a regular cd in a blind test and what if in some cases the file you're getting isn't necessarily better the conversation around audio quality often distracts from the one thing that actually makes your music sound incredible and by the end of this video you'll know exactly what that is in this video i'm going to be breaking down the full picture of high res audio we'll look at the technical specification what the science actually says and what truly makes a difference in getting great sound if you want more content that cuts through the audio myths be sure to subscribe to the channel so look what exactly is high res audio without the technical jargon officially it's any audio file that's better than cd quality a standard cd is 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz high res files boost those numbers typically to 24 bit and 96 or even 192 kilohertz to give you a better sense of this think of it like digital photography an mp3 file is a heavily compressed low resolution image a cd is like a full resolution jpeg from a great camera and a 24 bit 192 hertz high res file that's presented as the audio equivalent of a massive raw photograph pushing a data flow of 9216 kilobits per second the premise is simple a bigger file means more detail and a sound that's identical to the original studio master for this you might pay more for an album or a premium tier on a streaming service the industry has built an entire system around this creating labels like master quality to suggest authenticity but this is where the conversation becomes more nuanced some services have even started calling standard cd quality hd and only true high res ultra hd which can confuse people trying to get the best experience the strategy to create a premium tier with a technical name selling the idea that bigger numbers are always better but are they this is where the idea of bigger is always better gets more complicated the selling point of high res audio is based on capturing and playing back sounds that are almost completely outside the range of human perception let's break those numbers down the kilohertz number is the sample rate think of it like trying to trace a smooth curving line by connecting a series of dots the sample rate is how many dots you use a cd's 44.1 kilohertz rate was chosen based on the nyquist shannon sampling theorem which proved you only need a certain number of dots to perfectly recreate the original analog curve human hearing maxes out around 20 kilohertz so a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate provides more than enough dots to perfectly reproduce every sound wave we can possibly hear the nyquist shannon sampling theorem requires a sample rate greater than twice the maximum frequency in the signal to avoid aliasing 44.1 covers up to 22.05 kilohertz aliasing is when fast sounds get disguised as slower sounds because the recorder didn't take snapshots often enough like a wagon wheel in a movie that looks like it's spinning backwards imagine you're taking a photo of a spinning wagon wheel if your camera takes lots of pictures every second each photo shows the wheel almost where it really is and your brain sees the correct motion if your camera only takes a few pictures per second the wheel can appear in the wrong place in each photo and your brain thinks it's moving slower or even backwards in audio the recorder is taking snapshots of the sound wave if it doesn't sample it fast enough 
very fast wiggles high frequencies get recorded as slower wiggles you should not be hearing that mistaken sound is called aliasing. You cannot fix real aliasing after the fact upsampling later will not recover the lost true detail it only makes more data from the same possibly flawed snapshots. That is why good recording practice uses an anti aliasing filter before sampling to remove the frequencies that would alias. High res formats of 96 or 192 kilohertz are like adding thousands of extra dots in between the ones you already have. The curve does not get any smoother to our ears. The file just gets more cluttered with data we cannot perceive. The 96 or 122 kilohertz file can represent ultrasonic frequencies, but those are above typical human hearing. You are storing data that represents ultrasonic sounds. Your dog might be able to hear, but you cannot. Whether those ultrasonic components affect audible perception indirectly via intermodulation, DAC nonlinearities, speaker behavior, etc., is highly debated. The basic point that upsampling does not magically create new audible information is correct. Then you have bit depth, the 16 bit or 24 bit part. This is like the number of colors a painter has to create shades of light and dark. 16 bit audio from a CD provides over 65,000 shades of volume. This gives you a 96 decibel dynamic range, which is already more than the difference between a pin drop in a quiet library and a jackhammer outside your window. 24 bit audio offers a palette of over 16 million shades for a theoretical 144 decibel range. This is so extreme, it far exceeds what is practical for music. And if it were practically possible, the quietest sounds would be completely inaudible and the loudest would cause instant permanent hearing damage. Lavery Engineering and other experts point out 24 bit is very useful for production headroom not necessarily for noticeable consumer benefit on well mastered releases. So, can people hear a difference? Control studies show that the vast majority of listeners including trained professionals cannot reliably tell the difference between a CD quality track and its high risk version. This is supported by controlled audio engineering society tests, mainstream well controlled blind tests generally find no reliable advantage or consumer perceptibility of commonly distributed high res over 4416. But a significant pitfall is upsampling. Imagine taking a normal photograph and using software to blow it up to a massive size. The image does not get clearer, it just gets bigger and might even look worse. That is what happens when a label takes a standard 441 kilohertz master, converts it to a 96 kilohertz, and sells it as a high risk file. It adds no new detail and can introduce errors, meaning you might pay more for a file that is potentially worse than the original. Like mentioned before, upsampling cannot recover information that was not in the original signal. You cannot create true new high frequency detail out of nothing. So, if the numbers on the file do not have the impact we are told they do, then what does? What is the biggest factor in how good a song sounds? It is not the sample rate or the bit depth, it is the mastering. Mastering is the final quality control step where an engineer polishes the final mix using tools to make it sound clear and powerful on everything from earbuds to a high end stereo. The skill of the mastering engineer has a much, much bigger impact on sound than the file format. A great sounding dynamic master at CD quality will always sound better than a poorly mastered track in high res. Okay, this brings us to the loudness war. For years, the trend has been to make songs as loud as possible. This is done with heavy compression, which squashes the music until it has no life left. It is the biggest irony in the high risk discussion. 
a format might be sold on the idea of more dynamic range with 24 bit audio while the mastering itself removes all the dynamics from the actual music. I remember when Metallica's album Death Magnetic came out in 2008, the CD version was a famous victim of the loudness war, but the version of the songs made for the game Guitar Hero had a different, more dynamic master and it sounded way better, even though it was in a lower quality audio format. This proves it. The master is what counts. Tools uh, like the dynamic range database let listeners compare mastering differences across releases and I will leave a link in the description section. Another example is to go find original 1980s CD pressings of classic albums. Audiophiles often seek out those because they have much more dynamic range than the remastered versions from the 90s and the 2000s which were often slammed with compression. You could have a high res version of the 2015 remaster that sounds way worse than the original 1980s CD all because of the mastering. Example of this, Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction, the original late 80s pressing scores higher for dynamic range than the 2018 remaster. The newer release is measurably louder and squashed. Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms is a textbook case. The original 1985 CD shows a much higher dynamic range score than later reissues and anniversary packs, which are noticeably more compressed. Don't get lost in the marketing. The secret to amazing quality isn't just a 192 kilohertz file. It's a well-recorded, well-mixed, and most importantly, a well-mastered piece of music played back on a decent system. Want more myth-busting? I've got a playlist that pairs perfectly with this one. The truth of balanced versus unbalanced cabling, speaker sensitivity myths, tube versus solid state myths. If you're serious about better sound without the snake oil, click on the playlist or start with the mastering and pressing secrets and then come back and tell me what you found in the comments. I read every one of them.